as we've had several requests lately, today we're just going to do a quick run through of lgstoolkit.com and the LGS Trust Designer, which is a designer for trusses made of light gauge steel. There's a bit of a history to the calculation method for light gauge steel. This site uses the direct strength method, which is a relatively new method for calculation. Um, there's some information in a lot of places. One place is steel.org.au, where you can read it yourself, but there was a traditional method called the effective width method. Um, it was quite approximate. Um, and then later on, a new method was developed. Uh, it was actually developed by at John Hopkins University. And there's a link to that research there. And this new method is uses a lot of computational power, but it's more accurate at finding the failure modes in light gauge steel sections. So we've seen that graph in two spots, but basically there's three possible failure modes for a steel section of light gauge steel, these open sections like this. There's local buckling, there's distortional buckling. So local buckling is just part of the steel section uh, has buckled. Distortional buckling is where the section opens up. And then there's flexural torsional or flexural torsional buckling. That's where the whole section translates and buckles. And you can see those three modes in that graph there. And basically the method goes through and works out a curve based on the, the length of the, of the section under in question. And it works out a load factor for each of these three failure modes. And then you take the lowest of those three possible failure modes and that gives you the capacity of your section. There's a lot more detail on that at John Hopkins University site um, or there's other places as well where you can find more information on that. So coming back to the demo of the site, when you first load the page, you'll have your default truss and you can change the geometry of that truss. I'll show that in a minute. You have your parameters here on the left. So say my job ID is demo one and a member ID MEM one. You've got your win ratings spacing in your truss, your section size, configuration so you can have it standard or back to back. <clears throat> You've got your dead load, live load. These are good defaults. You can put extra supports, cantilevers. You can have it in imperial or metric. Several other um, variables you can change there and then you just click truss uh, check truss and it will go away and do some work there we go it's it's done its calculation on that section size which is c089115 and you can see that that's an 89 deep by 41 wide section with an 11 lip this is all metric so it's millimeters and you can see them modeled there as well. And it's color coded, green is a pass, 
through orange is okay to red is a fail. And you can also see the overall results, which is the worst case of everything. Strength, 63%. So that's a pass. Deflection, 11%. That's pass. And connections, 93 Connections will often work. The connections are shown by these little green triangles. And here where we've got a blue triangle and a little number in there, the number means you need extra screws. So at the moment we're using 14G screws. So this is telling me for this particular piece of steel, you need an extra screw at each end. Now if I add that calculation to a report, so at the moment I've got a calculation list of none, and then now I've got one loaded and it's called mem1, which is what I called this member. I can get a full report with all of the details of the calculation that's been undertaken, which has a lot more detail than the visual color coded site. And the PDFs come up on my other screen, but I'll just drag it across. Computer's running a bit slow because of recording probably. And you can see you've got a title page with some notes and you can see that same truss. It's, each section has a number now, same as what was on the 3D model. Um, you've got your loads there, your combinations, sections used, the section properties and elastic buckling properties. Then you've got your member design, so compression, tension and shear. And then later on you've got member design. So that's section, uh, that's section design and that's member design. Um, You've got uh, your bending, and then you've got your combined axial and bending, tension and bending, and an overall um, of all of those cases. Then down here, you've got your connections. It, it explains what the screws, um, the screws, what extra screws are required and where they're required. And then you have um, deflection finally, and then reactions. So your deflection, go back to your load cases to find out what the load cases are, and your reactions at the ends, A and B. So that's the basis of it. If I go back to changing geometry, You've got two options. You can either upload your own truss or you can use one of the presets here. There's four at the moment, but we'll add more. If I just use the simple presets, all I need to do is select the type, update, and you can see you've got that one there. And you can obviously change the pitch. You can change the spacing. Uh, the span and all that sort of stuff. If you want to upload your own CAD file, you just click this button. I've got a CAD file here open in the background. It's this one, so it's a fairly complicated truss. Uh, but all we're looking for there is a CAD file made out of simple lines. So they can be connected or disconnected and all that. It'll work that out. But basically just a single line drawing it doesn't really matter which plane either. Um, that's all we want in that CAD file. It'll do its best to work out um, what it can extract from there. So you just click Upload CAD File. I've got that trust there. I'll open that. <clears throat> and 
and now it's loaded that truss in. If I go back to design, I check that truss. Now what I should do is call this mem2. Okay, let's check that truss and that's also working. 96% It's on the limit, but it works. And then you can see, so I can add that calc. So I've already got that previous calculation loaded and I can add another one. And then I'll have a report with two calculations in it, MEM1 and MEM2. If I download that, I'll have a PDF with one cover page, but two trusses uh, and the full calculations. And that's the basis of the site. So if you have any further questions, please let us know via our website or leave a comment in the video comments below. But that's basically it for today. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.